Okay, everyone go ahead and turn to page 35 and 36 in your packet. Today we're going to continue working with two-way tables and we're going to begin looking at conditional probabilities. Pause the video and work for about five minutes on pages 35 and 36 to summarize what we did yesterday. Okay, so homework tonight is page 46 or 45 and 46 in your packet and here are the answers to the warm-up. So take a second and check your work. Here are the answers to 1 and 2. And then on page 36, here are the answers to 36. So today we are going to continue two-way tables. I'll put up the answers to last night's homework, and you should have already checked them last night. But if you didn't, you can take a second and check them now. Pause the video as you need. Okay, so everyone on turn to page 37, and we are going to be working um, with a situation where the students at Rufus King High School are having problems finding space for the athletic teams to practice with after school. Part of the problem, according to Kristen, is that the females are more likely to be involved in after-school athletic programs than males. However, the athletic director assigns the available space as if males were more likely to be involved. Before suggesting changes to the assignments, the students decide to investigate. So we know the following. We know that 40% of the students participate in one or more after-school athletic programs, and we also know that 58% of the students are male. So we have this table set up, and we're going to just start to randomly just investigate it. Not randomly, but kind of randomly. So if we have this group of 1,000 students, wh which cell represents the 1,000 students? Yeah, cell 9 right here. So that should be the total number of students in the school. All right, so on to page 38. It says, what cells in table 1 can be filled in based on the given information? So we are given that there are 40% of the students that participate in athletics. So if we take that 40% times 1,000, uh, it, no, is it frozen? No. We get that there are 400 students total who participate in athletics. We also know that 58%, oh, it's froze. Oh, bye-bye calculator. We know that 58% are female, so if we do 0.58 times 1,000, we find out that there are 580 female students at the school. Now, because we know the total amount of students, we can do 1,000 minus 580, and we find out that there are 420 female or male students. And if 400 students participate in after-school athletics, that means that there are 600 who do not. And just as a reminder, because we're going to need to refer back to them, this is cell 1. I'm going to put these numbers in red. This is cell 1. This is cell 2. This is cell 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, because we have to refer back to them. So this is what I want you to do. Take about two minutes, pause the video, and answer all of question three, all four parts. Okay. So the first question, part A, says, can we find the probability that a randomly selected student is female? Yes, we can. We know that 58% of the students are female. So that's a yes. Do, can we calculate if they participate in after-school athletics? Yes, we can, because we know that 40% of the students participate in athletics. Can we calculate the probability that they are that they do not participate in after school athletics and, and they are male? So when we read this, the probability they do not participate in after school athletics is male. That's like saying, what is the probability of being no I can't spell, even when I type and male. 
And the answer is no, we can't because we need cell 5. All right. And so then when we go to do letter D, male students who do participate, that would be like saying they have after school athletics and they're male. Yeah, we don't know that one either. We need cell 4. Okay. So what I want everyone to do is page, turn to page 39 and we get a little more information. On page 39, we're told that the athletic director has now informed us that 23.2% of the students are female and participate in after school athletics. And since I'm very interested in writing these statements, I'm going to write the probability of after school athletics and female. We know that that is 20. <laughs> so I like writing these statements. It helps me stay organized. So I now know that I can find this cell right here, yes, by saying, all right, well, if I had my calculator, if it hadn't froze, I would have picked it up and I would type in 0.232 times 1,000. And then I'd be like, wait a minute, I don't need my calculator for that. I know that that is going to be 232 students. Because I am so good at subtracting, I know that the yes column has to add up to 400. So I'm going to do 400 minus 232, and I found out that there are 168 males who participate in athletics. Again, I am awesome at subtracting. If I have 580 females in the school, 580 minus 232 tells me I have 430 and 48 females who do not participate in athletics. And I knew that this number by subtracting from 1,000 was two, 420. Let me take a six. So again, 420 minus 168 tells me that there are 252 students who do not, who are male that do not participate in athletics. And I knew that this number was 600 from before. Plus now these two numbers add up to 600. So it's a double check. All right, complete the table. Question five, consider cells one, two, four, and five. And again, I just kind of reminded you which ones are which. Identify which cells represent students who are female or participate in after school athletics. So female or after school athletics would be cells. One, two, and four. Which cells of the two-way table represent males who do not participate in after-school athletics? Well, that's just going to be one of them, and that's going to be this cell right here, which is cell five. All right. Pause the video and thoroughly read page 40. I want to write some statements here. The probability of event A is the same thing as saying the probability of selecting a female. And I also want to say I know that the probability, probability of event B is the probability that they have athletics. Now, it says, let not A represent the complement of A. The way we would write that is we would write that as the probability of, we say, A with like an uh, apostrophe on it. We call it A prime. The probability of A prime is the probability of not, not female. So common sense tells us if you are not female, just by the definitions, you know, not getting too socially active here would just be the probability of males. And so the probability of not B, not, so pro, we're going to say the probability of B prime is no athletics. 
see if I can squeeze it in. There we go. Close enough. All right, so it says, based on the descriptions above, describe the following events in words. So if you are not A or not B. So not A is male. So that means you are male, student, or not B or not involved in Totally misspelled athletics wrong up there. Sorry. I'll fix it in a minute. All right. Seven B says A and not B. So that means they have to be, they are a female student and not involved. Is based on the following descriptions and the table you completed in problem four, determine the probability of each of the following events. So this is going to be a lot of flipping back and forth. So to make your life a little easier, I put these numbers in for you. So take pause the video, take about three minutes, and fill in these six lines. Okay, I'm going to do this in rainbow order here. So what I have, letter A, the probability of A is the probability of female. So I'm going to take the total number of females out of the total number of students. And if I divide that, I remember I get 58%. Now, probability of B is the probability of participating in after-school activities. So that would be 400 out of the total. So that is going to be 40%. Not A means, okay, well, those are the guys. So not A would be 420 divided by our 1,000. I'm going to stop circling the 1,000. So 420 divided by 1,000 is 42%. Not B, so people who are not involved in after-school activities, would be 60, 600 divided by 1,000 is 60%. Okay, now it gets tricky. So now I'm going to start highlighting. I'm going to do the first one in gray. A or B. So A is being a female. So that would be these guys. Okay. Oops, too many. Here are my females. Or B. So I'm going, so also in there is going to be the... People who aren't asked, so the, these guys also, they participate in after-school activities. So if I add those numbers up, grab my handy hand calculator, do, 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 add up the gray numbers. Oh, oh, whoops, I didn't clear that out first. Plus 3, 48, plus 168. So that gives me pen, worry pen. That gives me 748 divided by 1,000 is 74.8%. You can make it a decimal. That would be cool. I wouldn't mind. So now A and B, they have to be female and they have to... Part. So that's only going to be this group right here. So on my calculator or in my brain, 2,000... 232 divided by 1,000 is 23.2%. All right. Take a second and answer the questions on page 41. Okay, so the probability of A is 52%. 58%. Sorry, I don't know where that was all about. The probability of not A is 42%. If I add those together, I get 100%. The probability of B is 40. The probability of not B is 60. If I add those together, I get 100%. What do I notice? I notice, and I'm going to type this out because it's an important statement. The probability 
I L I T Y of an event and its complement must add to one, otherwise known as 100%. Okay. All right. We are going to look at a few more situations and then you can start your homework. So, everyone go ahead and turn the page. I know it's a lot of pages today. On page 43, we've got part of a table. Another type of probability is called conditional probability. Now what I'm doing is I'm only giving you one row at a time so we can really dive into what it means um, to be a conditional probability. So it says, what is the probability if a randomly selected female student is female that she participates in the after school program? And here's how conditional probability differs. Before, all the other problems, we were dividing by the 1,000 students. Now, we know the student selected is female. That is the condition. We know we are only out of 580. Okay. If a student is female, again, this is given information. If, we, if the condition is they are female, what is the probability she does not participate in after school activities? Okay, so we can determine two conditional probabilities just looking at the males. And this is how we are going to write it. The probability that we participate, so the probability of a yes for after school activities, and then we write a line here, and this is given that the student is male. That basically tells us our denominator. That's the condition. The probability they participate given that they are male. And then we have the probability that they do not participate given that they are male. And this is how we write a conditional probability. Again, we are given a condition and we take that into account when writing our fraction. So we've got another situation here on page 43, but instead of giving you the row, I'm giving you the column. So pause the video and answer questions 13 to 15 here. Probably take you about five minutes. Okay. It says a randomly selected student is female. Okay. We know that the total number of females in this group is 580. Of those females, 232 participate in extra in activities or athletics. Keep saying activities. Of the males, we know that there are uh, the condition. If I know I have males, I have 168 of them that participate in athletics. Of the students in the school, I know 400 of them participate in athletics. Now, I can answer number 13. And then get to number 14 and be kind of confused because when I look at these fractions, they're kind of hard to compare because they all have different denominators. And so rather than create common denominators, which would be like a humongous pain in the ass, but sorry, I'm going to divide them. So if I divide them, I get 0.4. And I divide this one, and I get 0.4. And I know this one is also 0.4. So do I think they are equally likely? Yes, I do. And the reason I do is because the probability of partic participating in, ath in athletics is 40%. For both males and females. Oh, whoops, where did number 13 go? It left. It's not on the page. Oh, that was 14, sorry. No, where's the equally likely? Well, mine's different. That's okay. You kind of got it. 
We answered the question. They changed the question on me. No, I do not think they are more likely. No, they're not more likely because these events are equally likely events. Equally likely. What might explain the concern females expressed at the beginning of the lesson? Remember, if females didn't like that they were get that they weren't getting enough space. Well, first of all, maybe you know, the athletic director just shouldn't assume that more boys participate. But even though the same percentage. Females participate. This school has so there are more females who So there we go. It has nothing to do with the probability of a female participating in after school athletics, and there just are more females at the school. Being in after school athletics is equally likely for males and females. All right, homework tonight uh, are pages 45 to 47. Boop. Looks like this. Apparently, we need to fix C and D. On number three, C and D, the A should be an M and the B should be an E. I will scroll through the answers so you can have them here. 